In the beginning of July, Austria assumed the presidency of the Council of the European Union. By the way, don't mix that up with uh, the European Council. This is something completely different. Uh, Austria is governed by two far-right parties, one of which was formerly center-right a few decades ago, uh, and they brought uh, to the Euro European stage a buzzword that the uh, German-speaking audience has known for decades. Subsidiarity. So what is subsidiarity all about? Subsidiarity is the idea that the individual should do as much as possible and only if um, the collective, say the town you live in, can do things better than the individual, then um, the town should get active. Or to go one level further, uh, the towns should also do as much as they can possibly do and only if the next level, say the county, can do things better than the town, then the county should get active and so on. So we can take that argument all the way up to the European level and um, there it is that the European Union should only get active if the European Union can do things better than the individual nation-states. There are actually some benefits if a society is organized that way. For example, people get used to exercising their freedom and taking responsibility for themselves. Moreover, you prevent that um, the state or uh, some alienated European Union <laughs> um, do one-size-fits-all solutions that in the end don't really fit anybody's needs. I have to admit here that I actually find that uh, principle quite attractive. From an engineer's perspective, why would you build a monolith monolithic machine that tries to solve every problem? You could as well build many components that um, actually should only fulfill one function and then compose out of these components that can be reused in any context a bigger machine that can do more stuff. So complex activities are actually organized from the bottom up rather than from the top down. And um, I actually find that argument so convincing that I keep challenging my fellow comrades uh, from the left um, whenever they say we need a European solution for everything. But here's the thing. Um, the emphasis on all of this argument is that the lower level should do as much as possible. So the individual should do as much as possible and not everything. And this is the part where conservative politicians actually tend to cheat. What they often do is, at least in Europe, is uh, they explain the idea of subsidiarity and that it's about um, people uh, doing as much as possible and um, uh, the town or the country or the European Union only, only doing things that uh, they can actually do better than the individual. And then they jump and say, no power to Brussels! Is there any logical connection between subsidiarity and no power to Brussels? No. What they try to achieve is to exploit the fact that you don't really listen and that you might trust them if you are conservative-leaning and um, that you just think that there is a logical connection between those two things. The next iteration you can actually see in the US where conservative politicians don't even care to explain the principle of subsidiarity which there is called small government, they just say, no power to Washington. But why would conservative politicians do such a horrible thing? Huh, maybe it has to do with creating a power vacuum. Because if there's no power at, a, at some point, then their corporate donors can intrude this vacuum and fill it. But to be really honest with you, I don't even think that many conservative politicians are that smart. 
uh, I rather tend to uh, think that they get into their position because they uh, actually think that what they say is correct. And if you say such things, then you just get a lot of money from the corporations and uh, then you get into, into such a position. So what conservative politicians in Europe don't want the European Union to do is uh, reason reasonable things like fighting unemployment or uh, installing a common social security system or, I don't know, uh, making sure that the standard of living converges. And these things should be done by the nation states. But if you really want to cry, for whatever reason, I don't know why you would want to cry, but if you want to cry, ask a conservative politician what then the European Union actually is good for. Because the answer you will pro probably get uh, from many conservative politicians, including Sebastian Kurz, uh, who um, is the um, uh, Chancellor of Austria, uh, is Frontex. You know, back in the days when Germany had colonies in Africa, the soldiers that Germany sent there had a few moral concerns with um, directly shooting the people who already lived there. So what they did instead was shooting in the air, scaring the shit out of the natives, so um, they fled to the desert and... yeah there. That is Frontex. Frontex doesn't exactly shoot those people coming across the Mediterranean Sea, um, but they should make sure that they never arrive in Europe. That basically means that they are stuck in Northern Africa and whatever happens to them there, we don't give a shit. Installing a mechanism to actually help those people distributing them um, uh, across European countries so that uh, no ghettos will be formed, or maybe helping improve the situation in the countries where they come from, at least by not signing uh, trade agreements that act actively harm those countries. No such debate in Europe. I mean, there are such discussions in some countries in Europe, but uh, Nobody really takes it seriously. I mean, Merkel just saved her ass uh, from a rebellion in the coalition uh, by signing an agreement that could be interpreted as a step in that direction, but, but immediately after that, uh, uh, anything in that agreement turned out to be warm words. So don't get fooled when conservative politicians talk about subsidiarity or the small government. You should always um, try to figure out whether um, what they say actually makes sense or not. And most often it doesn't. And secondly, please pay a little attention to what the European Union does to Africa. Uh, it's really not funny and um, something should be done about it. Although I don't really have an idea um, how we could influence that. At least not yet.